Today, I want to talk about five things that changed my paintings forever as soon as I implemented them. And if you're a beginner, you're going to really want to hang around to understand these five different things and especially implement them into your own work. I wish I'd learned a lot of these sooner. I wish someone had told me, but it took me a little bit of time to realize the first one is using larger brushes and fewer colors. How often do you hear people who have, you know, 20, 30 different brushes and the same amount of paints, you know, 30 different paints. You don't need all that many brushes and paints. In fact, when I'm using, when I'm painting in watercolors, I only use a couple of mop brushes and a round brush or a flat brush, a little synthetic flat brush. So these are a bunch of mop brushes that I have here. And mop brushes are great because they allow you to get in large areas of paint. So for example, the sides of buildings, the ground, all this nice yellow that we have here, even the green in the background, you can get that in so efficiently and quickly with just a small mop brush because they have a large belly which hold a fair bit of paint okay compared to something like a little little brush like this one here a little synthetic brush so this basically does not hold much paint at all you have to keep reloading it it's good for detailing but it's not going to get you very far when you're painting the big picture stuff and you want to get this nice fluid vibrant sort of feeling with all the colors mixing together and the last thing you want is to use a small brush where you're just dabbing around and making it look overworked. This here is my palette and as a beginner one of the big things you want to focus on is not getting all of these colors in but just picking a few essential colors. If you've got your primaries a brown color and maybe a neutral tint okay you don't even need that because you can mix it up yourself you're going to be completely fine so for example if you have a bit of yellow ochre you've got a red okay pyrrole red or a scarlet red or something like that you've got an ultramarine blue and you've got a brown ochre or a burnt umber here those colors are going to just be completely fine for almost anything those five colors even if you've just got your primaries a blue a red and a yellow that can get you by for 99 percent of paintings i do use a color here which is neutral tint which is basically a mixture of all your primaries it, it's a dark color it's a premix gray essentially and you can mix that up yourself by using a bit of blue uh, red and yellow just mixing them up together and you end up with a nice gray looking color anyway i find these earthy tones are the ones are, that you have to add in because you can't really get anything like that from mixing your three primaries together, but pretty much everything else you can get a, a version of that. And if you just use, for example, an ultramarine blue, you can dilute that down and get that in, in the, to, to get a nice sort of light sky and you don't need a cerulean blue. So five colors, even three colors, like I said, going to do you well. And the big thing is that it's going to stop you from adding in all these different variables that's going to be confusing you when you get started. If I can get by on about five or six colors, you can definitely do that as well. So three brushes and three to five paints, that's really going to make your life a lot easier in watercolors. A second really important thing that took me so long to learn was that you have to paint things in a particular order with watercolors. Unlike with oils and acrylics, when you can add in a lot of lighter colored paints at the end, you can't really do that in watercolors. Of course, there's gouache, you can use that, but I find that if you use too much gouache, everything starts looking opaque and you lose that beautiful translucency that you get with watercolor. So I paint all my paintings in three steps. For the first step, I paint all the lights. So in this example here with these buildings, I've just got in a bit of orange, light orange. It's mostly just water, 10%, 5 to 10% paint, bits of yellow there, yellow, yellow in the ground, lots of yellow, all in one big wash, okay? Bit of lighter green in the background as well. Then I let that dry completely. Afterwards, I start putting in all the dark colors. So as you can see here in the background, all the shadows, all these darker trees, the figures here in the foreground, because a lot of the time, these darker colors, unless you want to get in some softer shadows like that, which you have to do while the yellow paint is still wet, most of the darker shadows, are basically, you get that in just after everything's dried on the first wash. So you can see here, I also drawn on a lot of the darks in the background with the buildings as well. So there's a bit of intermingling of colors, and even these trees here on the side 
lots of these darks. Making sure that everything in the first wash has dried first is really important because that allows you to get a more fresher look. If you don't wait for everything to dry and you start getting in all these dark colors, they will mix into all the light colors and you run the risk of just getting rid of all the light and having this turn into a big mess. So make sure, very crucial to just let that first layer dry first. And for beginners, this is this is a challenge because often it just doesn't look right. When you, when you paint in all those, those lighter colors, it looks too weak and there's this compulsion i don't know how to explain it but there's this compulsion to just try to paint everything in and and um eliminate all that light in the beginning but you have to hold back let it dry and have faith in the process that once you put in the darks then the lights will start to pop out and make sense the third thing you want to remember is to paint with fewer brush strokes so what do i what do i mean by that essentially if you can paint something in if you can paint a window like here i've got all these windows in and i can paint it with one brush stroke I'll do that, okay? Makes things so much easier, fresher, avoids overworking as well. There are some bits and pieces like this person on a motorbike where I've had to use quite a few different brush strokes here, but I've been really efficient with it. I've used only as many that I thought would be required to portray this person on a motorbike without having to overdo it. And you can paint so quickly by using this technique. Here you can see with these flowers on the left as well, Basically, I've only used a few brush strokes to imply these petals and then gone around it with a lot of this green in the second wash. And just a few brush strokes here, one, two, three, four, five. That, that's to imply that flower there on the side. You can get this nice looseness, this freshness and efficiency of brush stroke. Your brush strokes look more confident as well. The last thing you wanna be doing when you're painting watercolors is picking a very little brush like this and just dabbing, holding it you know, close to the head and painting bit by bit, bit by bit, because that's one way to just lose this beautiful fluid feeling of the watercolors. The fourth most essential skill that you need to learn as a beginner is working on values. So if we look here in this particular scene, you can see that the flowers here are very light, okay? That's because they're painted in yellow and with very, very little water. Yellow is also one of those colors that even if you use directly from the tube, it's still gonna be a very, very light value compared to say this color here, which is a black or neutral tint. So even if I dilute that down to 5% paint and 95% water, it's still gonna be darker than the yellow here. You wanna look at that reference picture very closely and a hack that I've learned from one of my favorite artists, Joseph Zavukovic, is if you just squint at a, at a reference photo or a scene, that forces you to be able to see the values, okay? So you'll be able to see which areas are light, which areas are dark, and um, I don't know how it really works, but it does. If you have different values in a painting, that's how you're able to achieve this feeling of depth and realism. You know, the shadows here, you can't use a too light color for that. And if you don't, and if you perhaps use another darker color here for the flowers, they're not gonna pop out and they're not gonna create this beautiful contrast like you see here in the foreground. So super important, it's more important than choosing what colors you use. The last essential skill that really took my paintings to the next level and sped up my whole process, allowed me to create paintings in 30 minutes or less, is connecting shapes together. So connecting the foreground to the midground to the background. I always used to think you had to paint each of these things separately, but that that leads to a very disjointed painting. You know, the foreground basically leads the viewer's eye into the scene. You follow upwards and you want it to sort of continue on, a bit of continuation into the background and the colors there as well. So you can see here, I've got all these sharper sort of flowers and then in the center, I just blend it on with this, with the grass, okay? So it, it becomes, you see the yellow, it just fades off in there. And as we get to the back, it's still, you can still see a little bit of that yellow, but a lot of this green. And then of course, we've got the darkness of the house and the sharper, contrast of the house, but I've also brought some of those sharper and darker contrasts into the midground as well. Okay, so it doesn't just all of a sudden go dark. You know, we've got a bit of bit of blending in between there. I probably should have blended that a little bit more. So here I've got this same thing going on as well. You know, I've got all these darks here and the darks of the figures, the legs, underneath the cars, the shadows, they actually blend on. If you look at it, they actually connect to the buildings in the background. Okay, this shadow on the building, this shadow in here. Okay, I paint it all at once. 
connecting it all together. Here in the foreground, I've got this shadow as well, running along across the ground, drawing the viewer's attention to the front of the scene. But then because these shadows, the darkness sort of combines and just blends in, you know, there's another shadow there blending in with the this taxi, this cab in the background. This again just joins onto the building. So it looks cohesive and the, the painting, the foreground, midground, and the background all join together. So that creates a more harmonious kind of look rather than keeping all these elements separate. You just see areas of disjointedness in your painting. So really important. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, do me a big favor and click the like button on the video, share it with a friend as well that would appreciate it. Really helps me to get the video out to more people and it doesn't cost you a cent. And finally, if you wanna see me make more of these tutorials, more of these workshops, make sure you subscribe. Hey there, if you really want to level up your watercolor skills, feel confident and relaxed when you're painting and just be proud to show your friends and family the beautiful paintings you create, check out my 70 course watercolor essentials program in the video description. I also have a Patreon with up to 84 exclusive premium courses. You can sign up and cancel at any time. The link is also below in the description.